Welcome, welcome, one and all. Winter Wizard here, and in this video, I'm going to be divulging more secrets of how to paint the colour scheme for my Death Guard army, the Drowned Plague. Okay, thank you very, very much for joining me, whoever you are. Uh, welcome to part four of Painting the Drowned Plague, the painting series where I unveil all the secrets of painting the deep sea nautical colour scheme for my Death Guard army. So we've got a model here, this is Gut Rot Spume. Um, part one, we did the Drowned Power Armour. Part two, the Rusted Corroded Metallics. Uh, part three, we did the Drowned Flesh. And here in part four, we're going to be looking at the slimy tentacles from the deep. Yes, yeah, so another really fun one for us today. We've uh, he's got all this. This whole side of him seems to have erupted in some sort of uh, tentacle spree. So uh, loads to play with, loads to work with. Uh, it's going to be a really good one here. We'll get started very shortly, and I'll uh, show you what paints we need. It's cold and lonely here in Winter Wizard's Frozen Fortress, but uh, I got a nice cup of coffee and. Uh, Dimu, my Norwegian troll, joins me as always. So let me show you what paints we need. So we're going to need, for the to base them with, we're going to need Rakar Flesh to build up the pink, very fittingly, Emperor's Children. Really great pink, really nice indeed. Going to need some kind of white. You could use Korax white, uh, but I've got a miniatures paint white here. It's just much thinner than the Korax. Um, better, much better for the sort of layering, but Korax does perfectly fine as well. Uh, for, then we're going to wash them with a Caribbean Crimson shade and for the final result if you want we've got, uh, got a little gloss varnish here. This is, a, this is Vallejo gloss varnish. Um, do really nice varnishes indeed. Um, but you could use, uh, if you've got Ard Coat from Citadel, you could use that as well. It's not not totally necessary, the gloss, but um, we'll see what the end result looks like if we, if we want to give them a bit more of a slimier feel. Then we can always add just a very little bit of this on there as well. Um, but that's it, just the four colours really. So we're going to dive into this. Um, it's going to be it's going to be nice. It's just going to be nice and relaxed. Going to do a bit of painting and I've got a few things to chat about along the way. Alright, so we've zoomed in here. We're going to get started. We've got the, uh, the Rakar Flesh first. So we're going to give the all the tentacles just a lovely base coat of this. Just got a little blue tack, stick that down there with. And I got a little um, paint cap there just to hold that open. So yeah, and I've got a little layer brush here, just a small layer base, whatever, a little small brush here, just because there's a fair few details that we've already painted in uh, around, particularly where the tentacles join the rest of the rest of the model. So we just want to be nice and neat, nice and careful in those bits here. Yep, so a nice base coat of this first. Just sort of applying that. Just gently having the, bl the brush flat and just poking it gently into those gaps there. Just where it joins the flesh, just being careful. There's loads of little bones and things on these tentacles as well. It doesn't really matter if you paint over them just yet. That's fine. I uh, was just working this all the way around. And give it's quite a few. And, uh, just take your time. Give all of these a nice smooth coat of this. And we'll do a second coat as well. Just give it a nice strong starting point. I've got a, um, a just a cap from the top of a can of spray here, just to sit the model on. A bit of blue tack. Found it quite useful. Something to hold on to. A sort of sturdier, more solid grip of the model. I think it helps with the uh, with the filming of this as well. I think it makes it easier for you to see. Mm. 
you know you can you can buy them from Games Workshop. Um, just little little holders. Put your models on. But you could just use anything you've got around the house. So yeah, so build another nice smooth coat of this. On those tentacles. Um, so we're going to carry on here. We're going to carry on do do the rest of them. Pick all those out, and we'll come back. Okay, so we've built up two coats on the um, on the tentacles here with the Rakar flesh. Yeah, very important just to make sure that the, the paint is really, really nice and smooth. Uh, the smoother you make the paint, um, building up the layers slowly, I think the better the final result on these tentacles will be. They're supposed to be very sort of smooth and slippy, anyway. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add another colour. We're going to layer these up with, uh, with the Emperor's Children. Another really smooth layer of this. Okay, so the Emperor's Children. Get some of this on the palette. It's already nice and smooth, this paint. I uh, do tend to try and keep the paints smooth and hydrated in the pots. Just about adding a bit of water with a with a finger, shaking it up. This helps to keep the paints nice and moist. Stops them drying out too too much. So we're going to do a nice smooth layer of this. Might just add just a tiny bit of water to that. Actually, try not to overload the brush either. All needs to be nice and smooth. Just carefully poking it in the gaps there. Working it all the way around. Just moving it around. There's a lot of um, dark and dank sort of colour themes going on in this model with all the blue, blues and the greens and the flesh is quite dark as well at the moment. Um, so having the pink it's quite a nice contrast, I think. Yeah, so just like that. Smooth this all the way around. Trying to make sure it's nice and smooth. And then, I think we can actually get away with just one coat of this. You'd still see a bit of the sort of Rakar fleshy colour coming through. And I think that's actually quite nice in this particular case. I think that adds to the effect, uh, the organic sort of fleshiness of the of the tentacles. It's not. It shouldn't be like a um, a clean, flat colour. Should be more organic. So I think just having the subtleness of the rakar flesh coming through adds to the fleshiness and very nice I think. Um, just thought I'd mention that in, like in every video I'm doing in this painting series we're going to be having a uh, little topic of discussion. So we've talked about a few things already in this series. I've uh, introduced myself. We've talked about choosing a colour scheme and we've talked about learning to paint and in this video the topic of discussion is going to be motivation to paint so how to keep motivated uh, things that you can do to uh, improve your motivation or boost your motivation if you're getting a bit tired or fatigued by painting maybe you find the whole process quite daunting and maybe you don't always enjoy it that much but you want the models to be painted and you want them to look nice well we're going to be having a bit of a chat about that in a bit first I'm just going to continue smoothing all this paint around working my way around the tentacles Again, just make sure the paint is really, really nice and smooth. You want these tentacles to look smooth and slippy. It's 
So I'll carry on here. So we're just waiting for the Emperor's children to dry here. Uh, like I said, I've just done one smooth coat, nice and smooth and consistent. And you can make out the Rakar flesh still still singing through. And I think that adds a really nice effect, actually. It makes them feel much more organic, much more fleshy. Um, and as long as the, uh, the pink is nice and smooth, nice and consistent over the length of the tentacles, then it should blend in quite nicely. And I'm using pink here, you can change the colour out, use whatever colour you like. I think Rakar flesh is a really great starting point, but um, instead of pink you could use green or blue or yellow, whatever colour you like really. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring out the white. And um, the effect we're going for here is the tentacle. Let's take this one for example. It's, it's going to be nice and dark, the pink is nice and dark towards the base and it lightens out more and more and more until it gets to the tip which is going to be really nice and light so it's going to go from pink blending into the sort of white and fading out to really nice bright tips it just adds a nice dynamic to the model I think uh, I'm using white but again you could use you could change that out, you use a, a lighter version of uh, whatever colour you've gone for or you could do the other way around, you could go darker at the tip, it's entirely up to you so we're going to bring out the white here, um, got some miniatures paint brand, white, any kind of white will do, you can use Corax white or any other kind of, any white will do really. This one I tend to use because it's nice and, nice and, it's good for layering, it's quite transparent, quite, quite thin, um, this works quite well. So make sure that this is nice and smooth on the brush. Just making sure I'm trying not to overload the brush here. So we're going to aim for the tips. Let's start with this one here. Just cover the tip. All the way around. First. And then we're going to go we just start pulling the paint back, smoothing it back towards the tip. We're going to go about halfway on the tentacle. About halfway. And then once we start adding the washes, that's going to blend all that, blend that sort of transformation of colour together. So it's not going to all look white on the finished result. It'll be much whiter towards the tip. I'm trying to just make sure that this paint is nice and smooth and we can always go back and strengthen that white towards the towards the tip. So I'm going to work my way around, start picking out all these. Let's see, you can start in the middle actually and then pull that back towards the tip. So today's to topic of discussion motivation to paint. I keep a uh, I keep a very simple rule which I stick to. Uh, no paint, no play. No paint, no play. If a model isn't painted, if it's not finished, it doesn't go to the tabletop. It doesn't play in any games. It's not ready. It's not battle ready. And the reason why I do this, just because, partly because it's always nicer to play with painted models when, when you've got two armies fully painted. It just it, it looks fantastic on the tabletop and that's that's why we play the game, you know. It's it's um, it's a visual aspect as well and really helps you to invest in the in the story of the battle and 
I don't know, it's just better. It's just better. And uh, I would never turn my nose up at anybody who turns up with an unpainted army, but it is much nicer to have two fully painted forces on the tabletop. All that hard work you've put in, it just complements each other. So I once, uh, I bought a model once for my Death Guard, the Biologus Putrefier. I really wanted to use him in a game, really wanted to try out a new tactic. So I sprayed him silver, I took him to the tabletop, and he was the only model in the whole army that wasn't painted. And he obviously stuck out like a sore thumb. But also, now that I've actually started playing games with him, after a game or two, you get used. You get used to the model not being painted. I do anyway. I, f I found that I got used to it. And then suddenly the motivation to paint him went out the window. It started to feel like a chore. I'm not really sure why. It's just um, he was on the table. I'd already played with him, got used to it. Got used to seeing him that way, and suddenly just the motivation to actually get him done wasn't there. Because I was sort of just doing it just so he would fit in with the rest of the army rather than doing it because it meant that I could then go and play with him. A friend of mine I was playing with, he said, Patrick, you've, you've got to get that model painted. The rest of your army's done. You've got to go and get him done. And I thought, yep, yep, he's right. So I, I made sure that it was next on my list. Got him done. And since then, I've always stuck with the rule. No paint, no play. It just seems like... It just seems right to me. The order of evolution. Buy a model, build him, paint him, play with him. Or her. Alright, so I finished the white. Um, we're going to go back and just build up some of them, some of the parts with another layer. So I'm thinking this one here, if we've, if we've taken the white about halfway up the tentacle, well then we want to take the second layer of white about halfway up the length of the white. So what that's going to do is it's going to make the tips nice and strong, nice and bold and the white is going to sort of blend out and you can sort of see a bit of the pink coming through underneath which then turns into the pink. Um, and once we put the washes on the final effect is going to be really dark here, lighter there, lighter still and the lightest towards the end there. And also, on a lot of these uh, Nurgle models with the tentacles and stuff, you can see like little lumps and dots and bumps and things. Any of those we're going to make nice and really bold and white. Um, so if you can see any of those, I'll pick them out in a minute. If you can see any of those, give a nice strong layer of white to those. Those little, um, those little lumps and pus pustules and nodules, whatever, you c whatever they are. Yeah, I'll carry on here. I'll show you what I mean. Get some more white here. Let's move that out. Yeah, so like on this one, make it nice and strong towards the tip. About halfway up the white that we've already done. Just let it fade out. Just like so. All like so. And we can always put just a tiny, tiny bit more on the tip. Just to make sure that the tip is nice and strong. And you see how that works? Really bright. Fading out, fading out, fading out into the pink. And then when we put the washes on, that'll blend it all together. So I'll carry on. 
But yes, no paint, no play. That's the way I do it. And I always find that seems to work really well for me. You're just motivated then to get stuff done so you can get it to the tabletop. But uh, I understand what it's like, uh, painting fatigue. I definitely felt quite a lot of painting fatigue uh, uh, during during my Admech collection. Beautiful models, of course. Um, it was the Admech that really got me back into 40k. But uh, there's not a huge amount of variety to what you're painting. Yeah, the models are very different for sure, but uh, the colour scheme, it was pretty much the same thing on every model. The grey, the silver, the purple, same colours all the time, just in different places, which is fine, which I understand is what a lot of, a lot of armies are like, and, uh, but sometimes that can be a bit bit fatiguing, a bit, a bit tiring, you just feel like you need to paint something else. It was really refreshing to uh, pick up 20 pox walkers again and all the different colours that I could put on those. Having a, um, having a real, having a real love for the army you're collecting, for the faction, whoever they are, I can inspire you to can inspire you to push through that fatigue. That certainly helped. Really love the Admech. Sometimes you just gotta, if you are quite tired of something, quite fatigued, you just need to do something else for a, for a little bit and come back to it. Come back to something with fresh eyes. For example, like I said with Halfway through collecting my Admech, I decided to adjust my Death Guard army a little bit, add another 20 Pox Walkers. That was really refreshing. Once I'd done that, I was very ready to go back and carry on with my Admech. But maybe you just need to do something completely different other than painting. Uh, go build something for a bit, indulge in some other hobbies. If you do any of the uh, the smaller the boxed games for 40k as well, or maybe you do some Age of Sigma, or you know, Warcry, Aeronautica, Blackstone, Sheets, by whatever. Spending a bit of time working on some of that smaller projects, so it's not going to take up loads of your time, and you can get back to your your big project at some point. But just having a break can really refresh the refresh the mind. All right, so I finished the uh, finished all the white, nice and strong on the tips, blending back in, and I've picked out all those uh, all the little spots, the little nodules, little lumps on the tentacles as well. And there was a nice nice bold bold bit of white. Once the washes go on those, it'll dull them right down, but it just adds like another little area of interest, a little dynamic to the tentacles themselves. So the next step, I'm going to move on to the washes. Here, yeah, so the uh, Carabao Crimson here. Stick that down. Bit of blue tack. So we're going to give the uh, tentacles a nice coat of this <clears throat> all over it. I'm going to build it up stronger towards the uh, towards the uh, the base of the tentacles where it joins the um, rest of the model and uh, keep it lighter towards the end of the white so it's going to be so it's going to blend from dark to light but you can uh, you can build up a few layers of this sort of blob towards the the base there plenty on sort of smooth it out back in I find that sometimes it's easier to to pull it back towards the base. That's where the that's where the main build up, the main blob of it is going to be. Yeah, you sort of smooth it from the tentacle, keep it nice and smooth. You can sort of leave just the very tip of the tentacle 
white. If you feel like you've gone a bit heavy, that's okay. We can blend that back down with a bit of bit of extra white afterwards. Just keep it nice and thin and smooth at first. Going to flood a bit of that into the gap at the bottom there, make that nice and dark. What we'll probably do is. Once it's dry, go back and add a bit more of this to those, to the chunkier bits, the darker bits. But that's the general idea, and we're covering up those nodules as well. But you see how they still sort of stick out. They're still quite bright. It gives it a nice sort of another little point of interest there. So that's the general idea feel like I've gone a bit too far. I want to bring just a bit of that white back. But uh, we can do that once it's all nice and dry. So I'm gonna, I'll carry on working around here. You can see how it, how it goes. Yeah, so uh, keeping motivated to paint. So changing things up, coming back with a fresh pair of eyes, a fresh mind. I think the the best way to actually um, reignite that spark for motivation, for wanting to get back to the painting desk and get on with some models, personally, and is to um, is to play games. So if you if you go and have a really great game with your faction and uh, I've had some I've had some fantastic little games of 40k with 300 points, 400 points tiny games small little table maybe 4x4 four four, or even smaller maybe come up with a little objective or a mission or just anything at all it's about who you're playing with and the fun that you're having but yeah I've had some really great games really small there's nothing quite like the buzz after you've had a had a really great game of 40k and it just inspires you to want to get back to the painting desk get some more stuff painted so you can get some more stuff to the field that sort of ties in with the whole no paint no pay no play motto of mine so yeah you're feeling a bit fatigued, try something else for a bit, have a little bit of a break, get what you've got to the pay to the uh, to the battlefield, and that should probably do the trick. So just carrying on, working this around. Uh, tentacles, tentacles are coming on quite nicely. Um, these lovely bits of skin still attached to the tentacle. Doesn't matter if you get some of the wash on them and just sort. Of that's fine. I'm trying to keep the wash nice and smooth on the white bits, but it uh again if it's a bit streaky or pooly, that's that's okay really. It's uh Nurgle isn't supposed to look neat. So we've almost done all these tentacly bits with the wash now and the next thing we're going to do bring out the white again smooth out some of those ends and the places where we feel like we've gone a bit, a bit too strong with the wash look at this one for example a bit more white on, on there I think and then Bring out the wash again. We'll uh, strengthen the darker areas a little bit more. And we'll take a look at the whole thing and maybe add a little bit of gloss if need be. And then we're done. Nice and simple, really, this one. Uh, simple technique. 
but uh, with some really, really nice looking results. All right, so that's the washes nice and dry, and the uh, tentacles are pretty close to being done here. We're gonna, we're gonna bring out the white again. And like I said, you can use any white uh, with this, any white you like. If you use a, uh, if you use a base white, like the, uh, like the Corex white here, I would say make sure that it's really nice and thin. I'm using this one here because it is uh, much thinner, a bit more transparent much more of a layer paint but you can get away with uh, any white you like really shouldn't matter too much just going to make sure this is nice and thin and I'm going to go back over those ends ends of the tentacles strengthen that white tip a bit and, uh, like here like I said I want to just Lengthen that a bit more as well. Maybe bring it out to about there. Just about there. That's a bit better. And if you feel like you've gone a bit far, or a bit strong with the colour, just get a bit of wash once it's dry, blend it back in. And then just right on the tip, I'm going to just make sure that it's nice and strong. Just pure white, just on the very end. There we go. You can see how that blends in. I'm going to darken it again just, just at the very base here, but the dark into the slightly lighter, into the almost white, into the white. But yeah, today's topic of discussion, motivation to paint. My best pieces of advice. No paint, no play. And nothing, nothing really sparks motivation quite like, quite like a couple of really good games. Well, there's also the, uh, the aspect of what do you do while you're painting? Do you? I imagine most people have something else going on at the same time. Maybe you're listening to music, watching videos, or something like that. Personally, I listen to a lot of audio books. All the fantastic Black Library audiobooks. I use uh, Audible. Highly recommend Audible for uh, for my black for my audiobooks. If you want to see some uh, some short reviews of some of the books I've listened to, they're on my YouTube on my um, on my Instagram account. So if you if you got a really great audiobook on the go and you're really enjoying listening to that and you associate listening to your book when, with, uh, with your painting time, sometimes that can help you push through that that project you might be a bit a bit tired of or struggling with. You see it as your audiobook time, but you're also getting on with that bit of work as well. Listen to uh, I listen to a lot of music, heavy metal mostly. The Scandinavian players are the are my favourite. And uh, a lot of YouTube channels, some really brilliant YouTube channels out there. Uh, some of the ones I spend a lot of time. Listening, watching to when I'm painting, uh, things like the Dice Tower. It's a channel for board gamers. It's not really Warhammer related, but uh, I'm a very big into my board games as well. Spend a lot of time listening to to them. Lutin. Luton does the, in my opinion, the absolute best law and history 
40k videos on the web, hands down. So they're fantastic. Fantastic colour for when you're in the hobby zone. Channels like Tabletop Minions, Uncle Atom. So he's a great hobby motivator. So find something that you like, and uh, when you're struggling with your when you're struggling with your uh, with your hobby fatigue or your painting motivation, but you know you want to get on with it as well. Having something to associate the hobby time with, like your music, like your audiobooks, your podcasts, your YouTube videos, whatever it is, that really helps. That really helps. That's just about done here. Might add just a tiny bit of wash to some of those areas just to blend them back into the pink just a just a touch just so it's not such a clear cut off going from pink to white and we're also going to strengthen some of the really darker bits as well uh, might just pick out a couple of those little nodules again with just a little bit of white just very grand very tinily just enough to make the pink still come through underneath this is more of just a very delicate highlight, but just gonna lift those lift those up a bit. Like so. There's a little one in here. These are like little bumps and lumps, not the uh the, these tentacles are also full of these little teeth, which we're gonna paint in bone. So we can leave those for now. That'll be the next episode. But right now that's looking good. So that's the white tips of the uh, tentacles and the uh, and the darker, chunkier areas all done as well. Uh, I've just had a just had a bit of a brainwave here. This is um, this is definitely wasn't planned, not expected at all. And I've never done this before, but I've created this um, create this slimy effect on the tentacles here, just there and there. You see, um, I've done it with a um, done it with a glue gun. Uh, applied the glue to a to a craft knife, and then sort of just played with it and worked it onto the model. So, um, so yeah, bit of a s surprise myself there. But uh, I can, I'll show you how to, how how we've done that. Yeah, so I uh, wasn't expecting to be doing this at all, but uh, I'll show you how we've done it. So I've got a glue gun here, nice and hot. Do be really careful because these will these do absolutely burn, and uh, they can be a bit messy as well. So I wouldn't apply this straight onto the model from the gun. Um, this will melt the plastic, will burn it off, as, a, as I found out a few minutes ago. Sort of apply the, a little blob of glue to the knife and then gently put it on the model where you want. You can practice on something else for a few times, but uh, let's give this a go here. So I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking maybe this one up top here. Maybe have a little bit, a little bit of slime stretching from around about here maybe. Just joining up to the top there. We'll give that a go. I don't want to go overboard with this, but I think it's just a nice little subtle effect there. Um, so I'm going to get a bit of this glue. Glue gun's already nice and hot. You can buy these from any craft store as well. They're, they're, they're very common. So I'm going to put like a nice blob of this on the knife, and I'm going to very quickly get to work, because this will dry quite quickly. But we don't want it... Oh, we don't want it too hot when we put it straight on the model. Just hot enough to mould, but not hot enough to burn. So we'll go for this. I've got a bit there, and I'm going straight to the model. I'm going to stick it, blob it there, join it up to where I want it to go. Let me join that onto the next one down there. Pull it away. Wipe the excess off the knife. Oops. See, it does pull off quite quickly, so if you're not happy with it, you can always pull it off and it shouldn't affect the model at all. So we've got a nice little blob on the top there. I think that looks alright actually. 
yeah so I've zoomed in to give you a better look there got this nice little blob on the top there there's a, it's worked out quite well there's a couple of couple of little streaks sticking sticking the tentacles together and you'll notice there's a little bit hanging out underneath there uh, not so sure about that bit so I've just got a pair of clippers here you can just just clip the bits off that you don't like easy as that there you go so I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with how that's turned out so uh, I'm gonna I might do a little bit more of this and then uh and then we'll wrap this video up there we are then so there's the finished result there's the slimy tentacles from the deep done some of that slime effect there with the uh, with the glue a little bit of a mess on the base there but that's fine because we're going to be covering that up with some texture paints in a later episode anyway I think we want to go too mad just a just a few bits here and there I'm really pleased with how it's turned out actually I'm may have to go back and do some of that on my demon princes or gargle rot and gurgle grime uh, and I've also um, put just a very light coat of um, gloss varnish uh, on the tentacles as well just to give them a bit of a sheen, a bit of a shine like they're nice and juicy and wet so we started off with a base of a uh, rakar flesh uh, built up just with a single layer of uh, emperor's children for that nice pink we filled in the white bits um, then brought out the caribou crimson wash and uh, blended it all together going from dark into light and then just adjusting the white and the, and the wash until we're perfectly happy with it making it nice and dark in the bases and nice and light on the tips and then uh, with a glue gun we uh, applying the glue to a craft knife we've then gone and done some slime effects and a little bit of gloss on the whole thing just to just to sh give it a nice slimy sheen and that is how you paint the drowned tentacles from the deep for the drowned plague there we have it then so that was episode four in painting the drowned plague uh, where we looked at the uh, slimy tentacles from the deep and we had a little bit of a chat about motivation to paint in the next episode we're going to be having a look at the washed out bones and driftwood so uh, all these lovely spines and bony bits and the uh, carapace up there uh, and the skulls as well and the, uh, and the lovely wooden handle of the axe there I'm going to be painting all of that and uh, we're going to be chatting about uh, my philosophy on collecting an army so I hope you'll join me for that one and uh, hope you've enjoyed the video today as well if you have then a, a like and a comment would be very very much appreciated and, uh, and if you'd like to see more of what goes on here inside the Frozen Fortress, then uh, perhaps you'll also consider becoming a subscriber. Once again, whoever you are, thank you very, very much for joining me today. I'm Winter Wizard, that's Dimu, and for now, keep it frosty.